Now, what do we mean by a better dream? You take any person in the world away from a group and corner him or her and ask the question what would you prefer peace or war what would you prefer love or hate what would you prefer violence or affection you will find that the answer to in every case is unique there can be no two opinions about it we are made as children by god and if you want to know how we were made by god all we have to look is towards the children a child unless he is indoctrinated that you are a jew or you are a christian or you are a muslim or a hindu no such distinctions exist in the mind of the child they go to everyone with the same love and affection everyone can kiss them and they are just bundles of joy that's how god had intended us to be and what do we make of ourselves we imagine ourselves to have certain identities certain role models by the society around us we are molded by our family we are molded and we have these uh, these roles and we tend to get entrapped in these roles we have to realize that we are much bigger than what we think we are we are much much bigger than what we think we are let me try to explain this concept in a slightly different way the way we perceive this world is conditioned by our senses we have five channels of communication with the world of knowing about the world either we see it or we hear it or we smell it or we touch it so let us look at the characteristics of each of these things let's look at our sense of sight what is near to us appears bigger than what is far away in the inner square law so it is acting like a local magnifier out of the entire electromagnetic spectrum that is available for vi possible vision we only see one octave from 3800 angstroms to about 6000 angstroms we do not see the ultraviolet we do not see the infrared we do not see the microwaves we do not see nothing of these things if you want to see we have to develop separate uh, instruments to be able to see we are spectrally delimited we are locally magnifying let's look at our sense of hearing what is inside of this room we hear what is outside we do not hear and let us uh, every sense the sense of touch you do not know what is away by more than 2 billion meters from your body it doesn't sense that it's a very sharp cut off and the cut off occurs 2 millimeters from the surface of your body once you go inside the body again you do not have the feeling 
And the feeling is there only on the, on the skin, surface of the skin. The skin also measures the temperature of the, and it also measures the pain. But these are, uh, they are all local. If somebody is pushing a, a, a tube through your arteries, you won't know it because you don't feel the blood that is flowing through, do you? The same thing, you don't feel that. So the feeling is confined only surface. So every one of our senses of sight, of smell, of hearing, every one of these things is acting like a local magnifier. Having understood this, supposing I ask you mm, to wear a scanning electron microscope which magnifies everything by a factor of 100,000, attach it to your eyes and discover how this room looks, appears to you. You may keep on searching this room covering every bit of it for a million years or a billion years, you will never make out how this room would look like. In order to see the wor this room as we humans see it, you have got to throw away that scanning electron microscope. Given that, you cannot have this. The range, the instrument is not appropriate for having a universal vision. Our vision has is also limited in so many other ways. For example, we said what is near to us appears uh, big, what is far away from us appears small. So with such a sense, what kind of a, uh, an emotional well interaction with the world I can have? So what is closer to me is more important to me than what is far away, right? So the affections that you have the attachments that you have to things are brought about by the nature of your senses. If you think of a small cube, a wooden cube and hold it there, it appears at a, with a certain size. You are not able to look at this, uh, this thing from all points of view, from all directions in space. Your view is conditioned to one particular angle of looking. If you are able to look at the cube from all possible directions, how would that cube look like to you? Would it have a spherical geometry? If you were able to look at the cube from uh, all possible mm, uh, time slots, how this cube evolved to, to its being the cube today? It was a piece of wood and this was a part of a tree if you go back in time. It was a seed and it was the earth and before it was the earth it was a, a, an intergalactic uh, dust and before that uh, it was everything was merged into one single point at the origin of the universe the big bang. So you see you, if you trace its history mm, towards later in the time, again you will find that it is going to merge into the mm, into the cosmos. So let us admit honestly that we do not have a universal vision because we are born with the senses with which we are observing that, and these senses are are limiting. Your attachments are the sources for your appreciation of the universe, of your division of the universe into so many different fields, of your classifications, of your cognitions. All these things are based on mm, the, the drawing out of yourself from yourself and this multiplicity, this projection is coming from the nature of the sen senses. There are two ways of knowing things.
when I say that I know that this is a glass then my mind is functioning thinking mind is functioning it's comparing this object with so many different objects and it has ruled out all the other possibilities which do not belong to this it has compared this with a cat it has compared this with a tiger a lion a human being a library a book all these comparisons have failed it said it is not this it's not this it's not this it's not this then among all glasses glasses it has uh, abstracted certain kinds of information and and recognize this 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 is a in the glass so it is when you say that you know something this act of knowing is like a knife it is cutting or separating something from the rest it is divisive the nature of knowing the act of cognition is is dividing dividing the whole into parts is the nature of knowing okay so the more you want to know the more you want to become an expert about something the finer and finer is your discrimination going to be and you are cutting the universe into smaller and smaller slices and trying to appreciate this and maybe try to synthesize the, their relationships between them but basically the knowledge is uh, is divisive the thinking mind is discriminative discrimination is a faculty of the thinking mind so this means that given a starting point which is yourself you are going into branches you are dividing yourself into your thinking mind your knowing mind and then you are mm, going further into branches and and sub branches and so on you are going down a an ever evolving tree you are going to the roots so this is multiplying in other words you can say that thinking mode of being is a centrifugal force which tends you to move away from the center or in other words you can say if you are standing on top of the mm, the surface of a sphere and the sphere is rotating let us say only at the center you are stable a little motion away from this you are tried you are pushed away in you are in an unstable equilibrium so a thinking mind is behaving like a convex surface on which you are sitting it is defocusing it does not remain focused at a particular point because it wants to go out and diversify and search the feeling mind is the opposite of this it is a centering device is based on love here what you are trying to do is to eliminate the distinctions you are seeing without your eyes you are hearing without your ears you are thinking without your mind you are feeling the feeling is a centering device this is the way of the heart the heart is a receptive thing when you are in love what do you do you make love you embrace and that is uniting it is making two into one if you know how to make two into one then you know how to make three into one because you ca first convert three into two and then two into one and by a process of continuous uh, successive uh, reductions you can bring an infinity into into one
so the love is a uniting principle and uh, knowing is like uh, pushing you away from yourself it is something like hate is it not if you hate somebody would you like to be near that that uh, that person you would like to push him away so when you try to discriminate with the thought between knowing when you try to know when you try to cognize when you try to name somebody or something as belonging to this or that or that then you are creating a division between yourself and the other and this division is the cause of the trouble it will not be the cause of the trouble if you are two modes of functioning the probing or the pushing away and the inviting or the receptive functions are balanced this is what they say in in different languages in different cultures they are called by different uh, names the tao the merging of the yin and yang the positive and negative energies the male is a probing a knowing thinking mind acting and the receptive is a female aspect so when you balance your energies when you balance your things and this probing this action the thinking is governed by guided by the female principle which is based on love then this action that you are performing in the world becomes meaningful this action must support and be supported by by the female aspect the receptivity <coughs> 